live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Right now on Good Morning San Antonio at 8 a.m., the Bear County Sheriff's Office confirming a chase ends in gunfire and the suspect is now in the hospital. Details on the investigation just ahead. Plus, continuing to adapt to the new normal just ahead in our leading essay segment, we're talking to the city's chief innovation officer about what technology has looked like here in San Antonio and what's next to come. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, a picturesque start to your Sunday morning. 51 degrees now. It is gorgeous out there. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Until then, good morning, 8 o'clock this Sunday, January 31st, the last day of January. So Sarah, how's your January been so far? You know, Max, earlier you kept saying, oh, it just flew by. Mine like crawled by. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's just kind of like the January blues, mm. the the dreary weather, but Sarah Spivey, today's weather. Look today's up. weather, oh my goodness, it gets a chef's kiss. That's the weather today. It's going to be absolutely gorgeous. We're going to have sunshine from start to finish. I do want to show you one thing, though. If you look outside right now, it, it kind of looks a little hazy, right? Well, it's not just you. We do have some dust that has traveled from West Texas all the way over here uh, to San Antonio this morning. But I want to put your mind at ease. Air quality, it's not that bad out there. In fact, uh, for reference, you know how in the summertime we can get that Saharan dust all the way from the Saharan desert? This is not nearly as bad. And in fact, a lot of this is going to end up dispersing throughout the day. But if you do notice that haze on the horizon, that's the reason why some dust from West Texas has made its way all the way over to San Antonio. It's 56 degrees outside, but winds are starting to pick up from the north northwest right now at about 13 miles per hour. And today, today those winds are going to be a big factor in our forecast. In fact, we'll see wind gusts of up to about 25 miles per hour at times. Let's take a look at temperatures kind of all over the place, right? Up in Kerrville, we're in the upper 30s, so nearly 20 degrees warmer here in San Antonio. That's a higher elevation of the hill country that's making it a little bit cooler out there. 49 in Del Rio, 47 in Yavaldi, 47 in Gonzales, and 55 in Beeville. As I mentioned, today's going to be a beautiful day. A little bit of haze on the horizon, especially during this first part of the day, but it'll be sunny, breezy, with low humidity. 71 degrees for the high temperature, and then temperatures will chill out this evening as we'll get back down into the 40s by midnight tonight. Looking ahead to the first week of February, it's going to be chilly in the mornings, but comfortable in the afternoons. I'll have a look at that forecast coming up for you and an update on air quality in just a bit. Max. Thank you, Sarah. And your top stories this morning, a suspect in the hospital after Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar tells us a chase ended with the suspect pulling out a realistic looking gun and pointing it at deputies. The sheriff tells us this all started when a senior and training deputy tried to pull over the suspect going 80 miles per hour in a 40 miles per hour speed limit. But instead of pulling over, the suspect led deputies on a chase. He stopped at Westfield and military and pointed what turned out to be a BB gun at deputy. Well, that's when several shots were fired. BCSO confirms the suspect was transported to the hospital with non life threatening injuries. Here's the thing. Last night's shooting was the second in a 24 hour period from BCSO and the fourth this week. No, I mean, look, it's, this is something that we're not, not just seeing here in Bear County. We're seeing uh, an abundance of weapons that are avail readily available to young folks in gangs, organized crime. Deputies say the vehicle and license plate do not match, and they believe the vehicle could have been stolen. But right now, the suspect could be facing multiple charges, including aggravated assault and evading arrest. Well, also in your top stories, two men are in the hospital this morning after police say they stabbed each other during a fight. This was a scene around 1130 last night in the 1000 block of Millivid Avenue. Police say two men got into a fight over a woman and drugs in the middle of the road, which escalated to both men pulling out knives. Both men were stabbed in the chest and one in the face as well. Police say he was taken to Bamsey, also in critical condition. The incident remains under investigation. And the parents of two children in the hospital this morning after police tell us the mother lost control of the vehicle and crashed with everyone inside. Bear County deputies tell us it all happened while the family of four was traveling southbound on Highway 16. This is around 1 a.m. today. The drivers hit several trees in the process and she was actually ejected from the vehicle. Her husband partially ejected. 
He actually ended up getting pinned under the vehicle. Both taken to the hospital. Both remain in serious and critical condition. Fortunately, though, the children, both under 10 years old, not injured. PCSO right now is ruling this an accident. Well, now to the latest involving the coronavirus here in Bear County. Local health officials have announced three. There are 2,121 new cases and 14 new deaths. In addition, 1,190 people remain hospitalized with 398 in the ICU and 247 on ventilators. The number of available beds on the lower end again at 13%. And when it comes to COVID-19 numbers statewide, health officials reported more than 18,000 new and probable cases on Saturday. Meanwhile, 332 more lives were taken by this virus. According to Johns Hopkins University, the rolling average of new cases in the state stands at 16,962. In regards to the vaccine rollout, Kerr County officials say their area is finally set to get another shipment of the new doses. Now, county leaders announced that they're slated to receive 1,200 new doses next week. A Kerr County judge also revealed they have the capacity to vaccinate 1 to 2,000 people every day. When registration becomes available, those living in that area can sign up by visiting hillcountrycovid.care. We have all that information and much more posted right now. Just head to ksat.com. Well, the world has changed a lot in the last year, as you've probably been able to tell. In response to this pandemic, we've had to rely much more heavily on technology. And in a lot of respects, families, businesses and organizations were not prepared. But over the last 11 months or so, cities around the world have adapted and progressed technologically. Now to talk about what this pivot has looked like and what comes next, Brian Dillard, Chief Innovation Officer with the City of San Antonio, joins us in today's Leading Essay segment. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, y'all. Thank you so much for joining us right off the bat. What has this shift over the last year looked like going from on or going from in person to online? Uh, to put in one word, tough, uh, but it's been tough, but it's been overdue and inevitable. Honestly, uh, even before COVID students been serving for years due to the lack of broadband connectivity. Uh, you know, we've, we've seen kids doing homework in fast food parking lots for years before COVID hit. So this isn't anything new, not to mention, you know, workforce as it moved to remote work in other cities. Uh, we still had a lag in some cities like ours. So, um, you know, it's been a tough, tough struggle, but, you know, it's kind of been a gift and a curse at the same time for us to push us forward. And Brian, we know there is a big digital divide in and around San Antonio. How have you and the city worked to bridge that? Right. Well, we actually started before COVID. Uh, we did a digital divides assessment starting in June of last year. Uh, we did that work with UTSA, Bear County, and Digital Inclusion Alliance of San Antonio. So uh, that, that lined us perfectly up to have a roadmap as COVID hit uh, to know where we needed to start investing in. So we've been, we've uh, council actually allocated $27 million to uh, start a project to connect 20,000 students in eight independent school districts in 50 neighborhoods throughout our south side, west side, and east side. We did that in an equitable approach using a partnership and collaboration with folks like Texas A&M, City Education Partners, Bear County, Methodist Health Ministries, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, we made a grand investment in this and I don't see that stopping anytime soon. Well, Brian, you said it. I mean, you guys started this bridging of the digital divide before the pandemic even hit, but obviously all of that had to come a lot more rapidly than expected. So what comes next in terms of not only the digital divide and that shift to more online learning, but all in all, the innovation aspect. Right. Well, one of the biggest struggles for, you know, city government, as we look at ourselves as kind of leaders in the nation, you know, we're looking at nation city approach here, uh, is resident engagement. Um, you know, here in San Antonio, we've got coming up on 2 million residents in our city. Uh, it's tough to, to have that, you know, kind of foothold with each resident, have that communication, that back and forth. So we talk about innovation. It's really about how do I educate the community on what we're doing and how do I get feedback on whether what we're doing is right? Uh, so as we deploy something like this digital inclusion project, how do I make sure we're actually connecting with students? How do I make sure that students are utilizing this in the most appropriate manner? And then above, above all that, how do I do that again in an equitable manner? How do I make sure I'm servicing those most vulnerable neighborhoods that truly need these solutions in place? Well, Brian, you have said that you have a tech background and experience, but at the end of the day, your position is more about the community and the people within it. So how do you aim to help the people of San Antonio during one of the toughest times? 
Right. Well, I'm, I'm third generation east side, so my focus is to continue to focus on our most vulnerable neighborhoods. Uh, we know that all this innovative stuff uh, doesn't intend to in, impact the lives of those who are suffering the most in some form or fashion, then we need to make sure our priorities are in order. Um, you know, we have a smart cities program that we kicked off in 2017. Uh, at the end of the day, if we're starting to do driverless vehicles and new one city apps and everything like that, I need to make sure that those community members are actually connected, have the ability to connect to those new innovative solutions before we start looking to success. All right, Brian. So just to be clear, more online presence, asking people for feedback and possibly driverless cars. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> All right. Thank you for your time, Brian. Thank you. And uh, time now is 810, 54 degrees out. Well, still ahead on GMSA, a special postmark for your special someone. Details on how the USPS is helping Texans express their love. And hundreds of orchids on display right now at the San Antonio Botanical Garden. Coming up while you want to catch this one of a kind event before it withers away. I'm sorry, Sarah, can you say love one more time? Love. Okay, <laughs> gotta love this weather. We're gonna be right back. Welcome back, bold, bright, and blossoming. Right now, hundreds of colorful orchids are on display at the San Antonio Botan Botanical Garden. I'm learning to say that word today. <laughs> today, though, is the last chance you can catch this one-of-a-kind display. Our Stephen Cavassos is live there this morning. And Stephen, what else can visitors see and expect? Well, there's a lot to expect out here at the San Antonio Botanical Gardens. Good morning, Max and Sarah. Just take a look right over here. We are inside one of the exhibits of the conservatory room. We already are catching some of these beautiful orchids that are on display this morning, and we actually have some of our members that are already out here. If you're a member of the Botanical Gardens, you get to have an earlier access before 9 o'clock. And if you check this out a little bit over here, if you want to follow me, Steve, we got this orchid wall right over here, so perfect for selfies for those of you that are big on the gram now. This is going to be happening from today from 9 a.m. to 4 this afternoon. Now, this is all in partnership with the Alamo Orchid Society. Vendors, including the garden gift shop, will have a wide range of orchids and other plants for sale. Now, guests, of course, are asked to follow all COVID-19 visitor guidelines during their visit at the Botanical Garden. But this is your last chance to catch these beautiful orchids that are on display. So again, if you're big on social media or if you just want to feel good about yourself, this is the perfect spot to take a selfie. And these are going to be out here until four this afternoon. Again, this is your last chance to check this out. We're actually going to have more coming up later on GMSA. And if you check my social media handle, you'll definitely find a selfie here in the background. Max, Sarah, back to you. <laughs> oh, I'm jealous, I Steven. I, I, wanna I wanna do a gram photo with the orchid. That's awesome. I love how he said, if you're big on the gram. He knows the lingo, that's the lingo, big on the gram. <laughs> Anything for the gram, right? All three of us, big on the gram. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I do wanna talk about January, because today's last day of January, and how we stacked up as far as rain goes. You know, we saw more than an inch of rain at the airport and there have been January's past where we have been completely bone dry. So it's nice to see that we got an inch of rain. Unfortunately, the thing that's sad is that uh, we are in a deficit. We should see at least another three quarters of an inch, almost three quarters of an inch of rainfall usually in January. So uh, yeah, that's about the downside to it. And you know, we are under drought conditions and not only did we fall short in the rainfall department in San Antonio, Del Rio, Austin and Laredo also all, all fell short, even though Austin saw almost two inches of rain this month. And looking ahead to our rain chances this week for the first week of February, it looks like it's going to be a pretty dry week. We're just not going to see a good healthy rainmaker in the next seven days. There is the potential to see a few isolated showers by the end of the week, but even that that's not going to cut it when we really need some rainfall and under drought conditions. So I mentioned before the break that I would talk a little bit about the air quality with the sun rising here. This has really emphasized some of the dust. It, this looks a lot worse than it actually is outside, uh, but if you look off in the horizon, you may just see a a light yellowish tint to the horizon and that's because there is some dust there out there this morning uh, but I checked with the air quality and the air quality is is 
moderate. It's not bad by any means. Only if you are unusually sensitive to dust particles in the air should you have a problem. Again, this is only a two on a scale of one to six. So, so don't let that stop you from getting outside unless, of course, you know that you're somebody who is unusually sensitive to dust. It's really the pollen that's probably going to be one of the reasons that you're sneezing. We got the pollen count in yesterday. Mountain Cedar was high. It's probably still going to be elevated today. 50 degrees in Bernie, uh, 46 at Bulverde, 49 in Canyon Lake, 52 at JBSA Randolph, 44 at Stinson, 52 at Rio Medina. Temperatures are still in the 30s up in Kerrville, 39 degrees in Kerrville this morning. We had that front move through yesterday, and that's what's allowed us to have a cooler start than yesterday. Yesterday, we were in the 60s to start off our day. Today, we're in the 40s and 50s. 49 in Del Rio, 52 in Carrizo Springs, and 52 in Laredo. Winds are starting to pick up a little bit. We've got a sustained wind in San Antonio at about 13 miles per hour. But watch what's going to happen to wind gusts today. We're going to see wind gusts of up to 20 to 25 miles per hour. So it is going to be a breezy day for us today. At least the sun will shine through a beautiful day. Uh, 61 at 10, 66 at noon, 71 for the high temperature with low humidity. Again, just a breezy day with the chilly evening in store for us. Satellite radar across the nation, big snowstorm. If you were watching GMA, you know that they were talking about this uh, across parts of the Midwest and then also into New England. This is that same system that brought us that front yesterday. We're just on the tail end of it, and that's why we didn't see any kind of rain. And with a big upper level uh, high pressure system, a big blue bully, as Adam Kasky likes to call it. We're going to keep rain chances out of the forecast for uh, honestly the next seven days. We do have a small chance for an isolated shower on Friday especially, but that's just not going to cut it. Isolated showers possible on Friday, but tomorrow morning and Tuesday, we're going to wake up cold. 38 degrees for the morning low tomorrow and Tuesday. High temperatures only near 65 degrees on Monday and Tuesday, so a cool start to the week. We'll gradually warm back up into the 70s, though, by the week's end. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Sarah. I love the Groundhog Day. Yeah. Low wave. The little groundhog. <laughs> All right, My mortal enemy <laughs> as a meteorologist. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's 820 and 56 degrees. All right. A cup of joe is always better when it is free. Still ahead on GMSA when you can get a free Dunkin' Donuts coffee. You know, the world runs on Duncan. Yeah, and Valentine's Day is just a few days away, and Texas has a one-of-a-kind way to express love to others through the mail. Coming up on GMSA, the special postmark from the Postal Service that lets you say, I love you, in a unique way. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. The United States Postal Service continuing a tradition for Texans. A way to express your love for one another. Stephanie Serna talks about the special postmark that is available if you want to send your special someone a unique love letter. Love is in the air all year in Valentine, Texas, located way out in West Texas past Fort Davis. And for a few weeks every February, Valentine's Day greeting cards also fill the air at the Valentine Post Office. For more than 30 years, the Valentine Post Office has offered a customized pictorial postmark to add extra thoughtfulness to that special Valentine. A new postmark design is selected every year from a contest held among local Valentine students. This year, an eighth grader is the winner of the contest, and this is what the design looks like. He says his inspiration came from a pair of deer he saw. He says the deer were always together and it reminded him that humans are not the only ones who need love. Animals do too. So all you have to do to get the special postmark is address the card to that special person, affix a first class mail postage stamp like the Love 2021 Forever stamp and put it into a larger envelope also with appropriate postage. Address the larger envelope too. Valentine's Day Postmark Postmaster, 311 West California Avenue, Valentine, Texas, 79854. In order to make sure greeting cards receive the special postmark and are delivered in time for Valentine's Day, requests should be sent by February 5th. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. And the Postal Service receives no tax dollars for operating expenses and relies on the sale of postage products and services to fund the operations. So this is a unique and Texas way to say I love you to that special someone. Sarah, what are you thinking? I love it. There you go. You love the, the love letter. <laughs> all right, 825 and 56 degrees. All right, we got a lot to talk about. Still ahead in our next half hour, we are catching up with the former Ravens head coach and Super Bowl champion Brian Billick. We're going to get his thoughts on this year's Super Bowl matchup. 
Plus the latest on a new mask mandate from the Biden administration as America sees more cases of COVID-19 variants. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday, 830 this morning, Sunday, January 31st. We saw yesterday start off a little gloomy. It turned out to be gorgeous. Sarah Spivey telling us today is going to be sunny, a little bit breezy, though. Yeah, a little bit breezy. And also, what may you see on the horizon today? Max dust. Yeah, some haze on the horizon, especially during Boom. the morning. Max gets 100 on the weather quiz this morning. <laughs> I want to show you uh, the uh, visual that we're seeing outside right now. The dust on the horizon is kind of enhanced right now because we're looking at the sunrise, and so uh, it looks a little bit worse than it actually is out there. But you may see some dust on the horizon this morning. Now, throughout the day, that dust is going to mix into the atmosphere and really dissipate, disperse, especially by the afternoon. And as I mentioned air quality. It's fine. Uh, there's nothing really major going on out there right now, except for, of course, we haven't gotten the pollen count in yet, but I suspect that we're still going to have a high mountain cedar count out there. 56 degrees uh, with winds actually turning breezy now north northwest at about 13 miles per hour. We are going to have a steady wind from the north today at 10 to 20 gusting up to 25 miles per hour. Temperatures this morning have kind of been a little weird. I mean, it's 56 degrees in San Antonio, but it's 10 degrees cooler in Port SA. Uh, this just goes to show that sometimes the little hills and valleys around the Alamo City can have a big impact on the morning lows. Kerrville just got out of the 30s this morning. Of course, Kerrville being in the higher elevations in the hill country, a little bit cooler there. Look at this beautiful weather today. I mean, nothing but sunshine all day long. Round four will be at 71 degrees for the high temperature. If you live out westward Del Rio, you're going to be closer to 75 today, but still a beautiful day on deck for us to end January. And speaking of ending January, February starts this upcoming week. I've got to look at yeah, your February forecast, at least for the first full week and whether or not we can expect any rain. Doesn't look great for rain chances, but the weather will be nice. Max. Thank you, Sarah. We begin this half hour with the latest from overnight. A man dead after being hit by a pickup truck on the city's west side. San Antonio police telling us this all just happened before 7 last night. A 33-year-old man trying to run across Calabria near Bandera when the driver hit him with the truck. Officers tell us the man was not on the crosswalk when he tried to go across the roadway. The driver of that truck did stop, try to help the man out. That victim taken to University Hospital, and that's later where he passed away. Also new this morning, a scary crash that ended with a car perpendicular to the ground and two people in the hospital. Just take a look. This was a situation around 10 o'clock last night at Loop 410 and Bronco Lane. Police t on the scene tell us a man and a woman were in that vehicle when it crashed. Both were put in an ambulance and taken to University Hospital. The woman may be in critical condition, according to police. It appears that no other vehicle was involved, but right now investigators are still trying to figure out exactly what happened. And new this morning, a woman in custody after being arrested in connection with a kidnapping. 35-year-old Princess Hill taken into custody, charged with aggravated kidnapping. Police tell us she took her ex-boyfriend's new girlfriend at gunpoint. Officers say it all happened Friday morning, just after midnight, 5900 block of Fair Green Street. The woman and the victim were later found at a local hotel. In your morning headlines, America is seeing more cases of those worrisome COVID-19 variants. Meanwhile, the Biden administration ordering a sweeping new mask mandate on public transportation. ABC's Trevor Alt has the details on when it's all expected to take effect. This morning, the CDC making masks mandatory on public transportation nationwide Monday amid ramped up efforts to get Americans vaccinated. Thousands lining up at mass vaccination sites like Coors Field in Denver and in Dallas, cars stretching for miles at this vaccination site. Some people turned away because of high demand. This is not a vaccine. In Los Angeles, some anti-vaccine and far-right protesters temporarily blocking off access to Dodger Stadium. The CDC says nearly 50 million doses of already authorized vaccines have been distributed so far, with 29 million shots administered, but many still struggling to book an appointment. It's been awful. I have never, ever gone through anything like this 
in my lifetime. With much of the U.S. desperate for doses, this East Baltimore plant manufacturing millions of them in anticipation of the Johnson & Johnson and AstraZeneca vaccines applying for emergency use authorization. The vaccination delay allowing the virus to mutate. The South Africa variant now in Maryland days after its detection in South Carolina and the coronavirus death toll growing. The death rate among the Hispanic community in Los Angeles up a thousand percent since November, many of them among the 90,000 lives lost in January alone. And sparking concern this morning, more cases of infected children. I was super tired, felt like I couldn't move. I had a tummy ache, a headache. Just felt very bad in general. Nine-year-old Thomas Schweitzer has fought through a more mild case, though other children have experienced more severe symptoms. Thomas's father, Mike, urging parents to be careful. Luckily, he was okay. Um, but, you know, you may not be so lucky. And that was Trevor Alt reporting. Back here at home, though, Beautiful day out there. The sun is shining a little breezy, but it's a great day to go check out the orchids. That's right. Our Stephen Cavassos is live at the Botanical Gardens with an exhibit called The Bold, the Bright, and the Blossoming. Stephen, have you gotten on the gram yet and taking your photo? <laughs> Yeah, I was trying to, and Sarah, that sounds just like a soap opera. I love it. But I have not gone on the gram just yet to take that selfie. But nonetheless, I think I found something better. We have our director of horticulture that's joining us now, Andrew LeBay. Andrew, thanks for getting up early with us to talk mm -hmm. about this beautiful exhibit right behind you. Mm -hmm. You had just mentioned this took two days to put together. Absolutely. Well, tell me all about what we're seeing right here. Well, we're seeing a, a wonderful vertical planting of orchids here uh, for our celebration of orchids at the Orchid Weekend at the Botanical Garden. We have these phalaenopsis, or the moth orchids, on, on this wall. And also this year we've added some oncidiums, or the tiger orchids, uh, you can see here around uh, these phalaenopsis. Um, it's a great uh, opportunity for everyone to uh, come on out and, and see these things. You know, what's great about it is that we know some of these orchids are going to be on sale today. It's the last day to come check this out. Where do all these proceeds go? So we have a great staff of uh, volunteers who help us uh, manage and grow all these, all these beautiful plants. And so really, if you come on out and you uh, take home a, a, a new plant, you're helping uh, support all these activities, all the volunteers and the community itself. Very good stuff. And the great thing is, we know it's been a pretty tough year in our community, and you guys mm -hmm. still wanted to make this happen. This is the second year that this is happening here at the Botanical Gardens. Why did you guys want to make this event so open to the public? Well, certainly, you know, this, you know, this day and age, you know, being able to get out, get your daily dose of nature, um, I think that's uh, something that everyone appreciates. And uh, we love to, to showcase these, these beautiful plants and to uh, provide these opportunities for them. Very good. Well, I'm going to get on the gram right now, so just check that out later, Sarah and Max. We're going to send it back to you. Fantastic. <laughs> I love it. The shameless love it. plug for the gram. Actually, shameless plug to the gram, Stephen Cavazos made his inaugural debut on my gram. Oh, big deal. I know, first time working with Steven, the pro's pro, so I had to throw a picture up on the gram. <laughs> All right, it is 838 and 56 degrees. We are talking Spurs. They faced off of the Grizz last night. We're gonna have the recap, but you know what? Didn't end up in a win. We're gonna have the highlights. Derek White is back though. There you go, sense of optimism. And if you love coffee, free coffee during the month of February at Dunkin' Donuts, what you need to know to get yourself a cup. Hey, taking a live look out at the Alamo City. Gorgeous start to your Sunday morning. 838, 56 degrees. What is the rest of the day? What does the week look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to ksatdeals.com. This item is already one of our most popular, a new one-year Sam's Club membership. This yearly membership is typically $45, but not today. It's only $28.88, and you get this for free, the Sam's Club Seasoned Rotisserie Chicken and the eight-count gourmet cupcakes. Now, there are some important details and steps that you'll need to follow. After your KSAT Deals purchase, you'll get a confirmation email to redeem your purchase. Use the link to finalize your membership enter your information and activate your membership. 
Watch for your confirmation email, and once you've done this, you can pick up your membership card at the nearest Sam's Club. Now, be sure to read the email confirmation and sign up now to start saving lots of money. The KSAT Deals price on this, $28.88. Head over to KSATDeals.com for this one and many more. Today, with vaccine rollouts falling short, how one state is getting it right and saving lives. Plus, Senator Bernie Sanders exclusive. Will President Biden take his lead on a new relief package? The Powerhouse Roundtable breaks it all down today on ABC's This Week. If you need a little boost to get through your cold Monday mornings of February, Dunkin' Donuts has brewed up a special offer just for you. What is the best kind of coffee, Sarah? Just plain hot coffee. Hot, hot coffee with cream. The right answer was free coffee. But yeah, so starting this Monday, Dunkin' Donuts Rewards members can get a free medium coffee with any purchase. To get the free cup of joe any Monday in February, Dunkin' Donut Perks members can order ahead via the Dunkin' app. Dunkin' says they want to reward their loyal customers as they head into the home stretch of the winter. I failed Max's quiz. <laughs> it's okay. Do y'all want to take a guess at how I like my coffee? Uh, you don't like it black, right? Or do you? I only like my coffee black. Okay, I couldn't remember. Oh, Max, I, Max likes it black, right? Mm -hmm. I'm the only one that likes it with cream. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, that's I just awesome. A bit. I'm literally so like specific about it. I have to, every morning I do a pour over coffee and I bring it to mm. work, even at two o'clock in the morning when I get up. You and your bougie coffee. A bougie <laughs> coffee for a bougie lady. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the time lapse this morning. This is important. I want to show you the time lapse because look at the horizon. You can notice that there is a little haze on the horizon as we're uh, heading into the rest of the day that haze is going to disperse but that haze is some dust left over from a dust storm in West Texas. It's traveled all the way to San Antonio, a very thin layer of dust at the horizon. But don't worry, the air quality is still fine. In fact, looking at the air quality today, it's moderate, which is one above good, you know, but it's only a two on a scale of one to six. So really, the only thing that you'll need to worry about is if you are unusually sensitive and you know who you are to dust in the air, you might want to uh, make sure to to limit your time outdoors. For the vast majority of us, the thing that's going to get us in the air today is going to be the mountain cedar. We have yet to get the pollen count in, but as soon as we do, I'll make sure to report that. Uh, 56 degrees outside right now, sunny skies. Winds are starting to pick up. Wind from the north northwest at 13, gusting at 22 miles per hour. We're going to see wind gusts of up to 25 miles per hour today. Here's a look at the future cast wind gusts uh, everywhere, about wind gusts of 25 miles per hour from the north. That north wind is going to help to keep things from getting too warm today in spite of the total sunshine, but it's still going to be a very pleasant pleasant day. Right now we're in the 50s and in the 40s, 45 in Hondo, 49 in Del Rio, 46 in Rock Springs, 56 here in San Antonio, 54 in New Braunfels, 51 in Pleasanton, and 54 in Gonzales. It is very dry outside. It's chapstick weather out there today. Dew points in the 20s and in the 30s. Very dry weather compared to yesterday when we were muggy with dew points in the 60s. The reason for that, of course, is we had that front move through yesterday and dew points are about 20 to 30 degrees drier than they were yesterday. So let's get to the forecast for the day today. It's going to be beautiful sunshine all day long. 61 at 10, 66 at noon, 71 for the high temperature today, and again breezy with gusts up to 25 miles per hour. We'll be able to cool down nicely tonight as those winds will start to die down a bit, and we'll be back into the 40s by midnight tonight. A wide view of the nation, and one big feature screams at you. It's this huge snowstorm across parts of the Midwest, Great Lakes, and New England going to be moving across parts of New England here very shortly. Snowstorm there and rainfall across the Appalachian Mountains. Uh, that's that front that moved through yesterday. Instead, in its wake, what we're going to see is a big ridge of high pressure. High means dry, and this is going to send all of the uh, precipitation and most of the cloud cover up and over Texas as that high pressure system moves over Texas over the next coming days. So it's going to be a quiet weather pattern for the first week of February. We do start to see a bit of an uh, uneven weather pattern at the end where we're looking at an isolated chance for a shower or two uh, pretty much from Thursday into the
the weekend, but the chance of rain, look at that, it's pretty wimpy, 10 to 20%. Definitely not enough to help out with the extreme drought in places west of San Antonio. The first week of February looks good. Cold starts Monday and Tuesday, comfortable afternoons. Most of the week uh, we'll be getting close to 80 degrees by Thursday, though, so a little bit of a warm spot there on the forecast. Other than that, looks nice for the first week of February. All right, thank you, Sarah. Happy Sunday. For the first time since January 1st, the Spurs had their full team on the court. Derek White is back, taking on the Memphis Grizzlies. They fell a little short. Let's roll the highlights. Here we go. First quarter game of cat and mouse. Grizzlies answering back every time the Spurs would take a lead. There we go. The Grizz leading 71-64 here. John Morant was nearly unstoppable. He had an injury early in the season, but clearly is back. San Antonio would have a short lead in the first quarter, but that was pretty much it. There we go. Former Spur right there, Kyle Anderson. We know him well, and we just saw him score again. It was a tough challenge for the Spurs. They were able to hang around. Derek White hit a couple threes, had 18 points, led the scores. DeMar DeRozan did what he could, but in the end, good passing, good shooting by the Memphis Grizz. And there we go. The Grizz actually hit 17 threes. Final score, though, Grizzlies 129, Spurs 112. Don't worry, though. You don't have to wait that much longer to see them back in action. Right back at it tomorrow night. Same team, same location, same time, 7.30, Grizzlies, AT&T Center. And we talk Spurs, now we get to talk Super Bowl. It is almost here and it's going to be a fun one coming up next Sunday. So Tom Brady and the Bucks taking on Patty Mahomes, shout out Texas Tech, and the defending champs, Kansas City Chiefs. Here's the thing though, KSAT Sports, our fantastic producer Daniel actually caught up with the former Ravens head coach and Super Bowl champ Brian Billick. Get his thoughts on the matchup. Uh, both teams are capable of the big plays with Brady, with Evans and Godwin and, and uh, A.B. And then obviously with all the weapons they have in Kansas City with Hill and Kelsey and all the others that they can hit, they can hurt you in so many ways. So both defenses have to stop from, you know, make sure they don't give up the big play. Both teams are capable of just working it down the field as well. So I imagine both coaches would take that, uh, that deal with the devil that, OK, let's make this a tie game going into the last series and my guy gets the last possession. Both both have confidence with their guy that they could get that done. So I, I think it's going to be a great game. And you're going to hear more from Coach Billick tonight on Instant Replay. He's going to be talking Cowboys, Texans, the X Tech, it's a special shoulder pad company that's used by the NFL, the NCAA, and even some Texas high schools. All right, back here at home, a story that's captivated the hearts of San Antonio, one that we have been following very closely, a local high school football player's death because of cancer. Fans, though, honoring his memory, filling bleachers, once again, remembering Bryce Wisdom with a very tr special tribute. The All-Star football game at Heroes Stadium Saturday, paying tribute to Bryce Wisdom, Wisdom's mother and family, all in attendance. They were presented with a special jersey, the former Judson Rocket, now an honorary member of the 2021 All-Star football team. And Bryce's mom, Diana Wisdom, who is overcome by all this emotion, says she is thankful that her son is being honored. I'm just so humbled. I just, the outpouring of love and support from the city and the people in it, it's just so amazing. And it's so needed because this is what gets me up, makes me keep going. So emotional there and such an incredible tribute. Remember Bryce passed away July 27th, 2020, and his mother says it wasn't easy to show up to the event, but Bryce was certainly there. Wow, so amazing. All right, 851, 57 degrees out. And it's been two years, two years from the murder of 18-year-old Abigail Alcorta, and it still remains unsolved. Tomorrow on GMSA, we're taking a look back at this case that left a family looking for some closure that's in our South Texas Crime Story series. And the news you need to know before you go, Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says a man was shot by deputies after he pointed what they say looked like a realistic gun or BB gun. According to Salazar, two deputies tried to pull the driver over for speeding, but he led them on a chase. The suspect eventually stopped on the far west side of town and pointed that realistic looking gun at a deputy. And that's when several shots were fired. He was taken to the hospital with non-life threatening injuries.
Warming up in San Antonio, 58 degrees right now, uh, 45 in Kerrville, 46 in Rock Springs. Today's going to be a beautiful day, sunny, low humidity, breezy with winds gusting up to 25 miles per hour, 71 for the high. And as I mentioned before, a pretty quiet start to February. Cold mornings and comfortable afternoons. All right. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you so much for watching. That is all of it for right now, but you have a great rest of your Sunday. We'll see you next weekend. See you in February. Have a good Sunday. <gasps> Ha, ha, ha.